<laughs> now, I know a lot of the news media is covering a lot of very important things in the world. A lot of things that should be talked about, things that should be covered, and you know, a lot of thoughts and prayers and that saying going around for a lot of things. A lot of things like that are unfortunately happening today way too often. As I record this video, there was a terrible shooting in New Zealand, which definitely deserves all the coverage and uh, absolutely my uh, uh, well wishes go out to those people that are affected, which never really liked saying that. It just kind of seems so empty and hollow to me. I, I know people mean well enough when they say that, I, I don't know, it's just what can you do? All this terrible stuff that happens in the world is tragic. It's just awful. You have people losing their lives and uh, just uprooting their lives in certain situations. And I do appreciate all the coverage of uh, uh, these types of stories. I have not heard too much media coverage over the flooding that's happening around where I live, around the Nebraska-Iowa uh, border. Now, to be honest, I don't watch a whole lot of news, national or local too much. But when a major thing happens to my community, something that kind of figuratively and literally hits home, yeah, I'll start to pay attention. So I am in no way a uh, credible news source. I, I definitely uh, do not do a whole lot of research on my part. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the flooding and the uh, horrible effects that it has taken upon people in an area that should not be flooding. Again, I don't know why there was all this flooding in the first place, but I believe it is due to a couple uh, uh, water levees and dams being broken. And for those that don't really pay much attention to the Midwest, believe me, I know only people that live in the Midwest pay attention to things that happen in the Midwest. We had a horrible, horrible, harsh winter this year, kind of rougher than most in recent memory. And that brought, I think it was like 56 total inches of snow, roughly, or maybe around like an average of like 45 inches of snow in the Midwest, which is crazy. Then we hit the spring where in the Midwest it is kind of mud season. There's just a lot of rain. And because it is spring, it rains a lot, especially in the Midwest where we have crops to plant and grow. So in combination with the abundance of rain that is common in the Midwest around the springtime, and then with the harsh snow weather we had, all that snow has to melt and that just gets funneled into more rivers and dams and creeks. And that means that dams and levees can't hold that much. It's just not expected to. There's probably some other reasons, and I may not even be saying all the things I just said correctly, but regardless, people's livelihoods, homes, and just lives in general have been uh, terribly affected by this flood. I want to show a couple pictures of uh, the floodings. Now, these pictures are uh, places that uh, I literally just drive every day to go to work. Uh, it's, it's pretty insane. These two roads are roads that I drive on every single day. I go this way to go uh, on I-29 and uh, this one to go back home. I use this every day and you can already see over here that the water has taken this, uh, this road right here. It's absolutely insane. Just all this water here should not be here, including over on this section where you can kind of see that the road kind of banks up. There's a ditch here. It, the ditch is almost taken over by just the sheer amount of water. This is the same shot, but at a different angle behind it. And just the devastation of this water is just absolutely horrifying. This is about maybe five minutes away from my house. Luckily, this part of the town that I live in is the is happening on the opposite side of the town. There's a lot more worse cases kind of farther down the uh, uh, I-29, um, I believe headed south or maybe west, no east, my bad, that uh, is uh, far worse than this, which is absolutely insane. There's a, a town, the small town next to where I live. Uh, had to do a mandatory evacuation because of the water rising. And a lot of other towns around the Nebraska-Iowa border is just insanely flooded. Again, you have all this farmland uh, that's just been overtaken by water. This road that comes up and uh, does a, uh, I forget what you call it, like a four-leaf clover turn back onto the interstate. Uh, as you can see, like some of the water is being over the row, which is insane and uh, high reason why you should not be driving on it. Look at that. Ugh, I, I, I have absolutely no words for this. This is a motel 
that has uh i'll go back real quick that uh, that motel is this one right here and i've known this motel to be there for as long as i can remember and they recently remodeled this motel too and i believe the owners of the motel live there too i i could i could definitely not stand up straight in this water so across the road on i-29 uh, you have this spot right here, which is for uh, campers and trailers. Gone. It's just gone. And uh, this trucking uh, building right here, which I, I don't exactly know what they do. They sell uh, semi-supplies and trucks, I believe. Uh, in 2011, we also had a huge flooding problem uh, in the area. And uh, I took the time to volunteer to help sandbag um, for this for for that building to uh, because of the uh, the flooding that happened in 2011. This right here is a Harley Davidson uh, dealer, and I don't know if they got all the bikes out of there. I I, I do know that they were able to move some to a uh, different location and a parking lot of another store, a farming store. And I know I did hear that they were just selling. They were still selling um, bikes. Uh, in the parking lot. Yeah, here's, here's a closer look at just this devastation of the, uh, this trucking building. And it's crazy because I remember uh, sandbagging on the other side of uh, uh, this building and even sandbagging here because there's a huge uh, a garage door over on this side of the building. And they had a large pile of sand and a bunch of uh, uh, sandbags that I and two other guys were sandbagging in 2011. It's crazy. Look at that. All these semis. They... I, I I don't know too much about uh, automobile or semi uh, damage when it comes to water, but I wager that this is still a lot of damage and probably cost a lot of money for just uh, these uh, vehicles. Luckily, these are semi, so they sit pretty high up. So hopefully, they'll be okay. Again, like dev like you like going this way uh, to this this direction, taking this road down to here. That, in that direction, is the other town that uh, needed to do a emergency evacuation. And, again, lots of other towns have had emergency evacuations. We'll probably go look at a couple more, but as you can see, you can't even get there without driving over water. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember going into this Harley-Davidson store, and, uh, yeah, the water is... The, the, that building is flooded. This farmhouse is just gone. Absolutely destroyed. And I believe uh, this farm was actually hit by a, a tornado last year, too. So uh, that, that's absolutely devastating. Here's a little bit further down the road. You can see the road right here. It, and even over here is just taken by water. All the way down here is so much water. And this, uh, these couple of buildings, this is a, a Love's gas station, a Bucky's gas station. Uh, obviously, this is a BP. These two facilities here, they're about, uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but they're pretty brand new in all things considering, like maybe three to five years new, which is, that, that's still pretty new, especially around in a, uh, a very rural area, farmland, Iowa area. These uh, buildings inside, they looked immaculate. The, these places look brand new. These places looked just not of this town. This flooding is going to put them back 10 years. It, it's just not going to look as great as it does. So here is a uh, drone footage, or maybe it's a helicopter footage, of uh, more flooding. I'm not sure what town this is, but you, as you can clearly see, all these houses are uh, flooded and just uh, so much property damage and even more water that's just here. It, it, it's absolute insanity how much flooding happened i know quite a few people that have uh posted on social media that have been affected by all this flooding some people lost their homes in fact my my dad's wife's mom um her house is gone and uh she wasn't able to uh uh take anything of uh true value really had like photos and i know she had a dresser that was passed down through her family that dresser is just floating in water in, inside, her, inside her house. Just absolutely crazy. So this is a little different video. Uh, just uh, I want to show people the devastation and uh, just kind of spread awareness about uh, this flooding. I, I know this video won't spread farther than 
just my general audiences, which I know to be just uh, people that uh, know me personally. But I just wanted to make it known that uh, we in the Midwest, we still have our problems. And uh, unfortunately, I feel that sometimes the Midwest's uh, issues get really like pushed down in uh, news and media uh, for the fact that nothing too much happens in the Midwest, which I kind of understand. But most the, mostly the news and uh, media coverage features things on the East Coast or the West Coast, and not a whole lot gets uh, mentioned from uh, the Midwest. Yeah, it's uh, it's not great around here. It's uh, pretty crazy. Uh, again, I don't really like saying this, but um, thoughts and uh, well wishes to the people that were affected by this tragedy. It's, it's absolutely insane. Uh, if anything, I do know that um, we Midwesterners are pretty, pretty hardy and pretty strong. So I'm, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that uh, we'll bounce back from this. But uh, anyways, sorry for the weird video. But uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this and to show the world uh, what is happening in uh, our neck of the woods.